Good morning to everybody. Um, we shall just wait a couple more minutes. We're just seeing that the guys are filling up in terms of attendees. Um, it's, it's hit just nine o'clock. So we'll give a couple more minutes and then uh, we can start. Thank you. Okay, so 901 um, seems like most people in the in the call or in the webinar. Um, so yeah, so basically today we're going to start off uh, and go through the Alphatron range of products that we have, and uh, hopefully we can get through this quite quickly. Um, it's quite a few slides, but uh, let's let's go for it and see what we can do. So today we're going to be going through to, uh, through most of the equipment that you could use in a small to medium size uh, and possibly large boardroom uh, spaces. At this point in time, um, the products that we'll be showing today will help them uh, enhance uh, either VC calls or presentations or anything in that sense. And uh, just to give the client a better experience rather than a standard small boardroom setup with a laptop and a HDMI cable type thing. So today we will be starting with um, scaling equipment. So we have uh, a couple of different forms of scaling uh, equipment. This is our SE61. Um, this guy is one of the best sellers in the Alphatron range that we have at the moment. Very basic uh, setup, um, yet very, very nice piece of equipment to put in any type of boardroom. Uh, again, from small huddle spaces right up to semi-large boardrooms. Um, 4K pass through, six video inputs, that's four HDMI to VGA, and one HDMI output. It's got a D embedded audio, uh, 3.5 jack or optical, and you can control it over IR or RS-232. This is a great little unit. It's an auto switcher, which is also awesome. So you can use our pop-ups. You can put the HDMI through the pop-ups or the VGAs, and as soon as you plug and play, it will switch uh, accordingly through to the different sections or the different inputs and outputs. Next one on the block is uh, SCU91T. So this is basically a nine in one. So this is nine inputs opposed to the six in one. So as you can see there, I'm sure the pictures are a little bit small, but um, it's got an HD base T input, a display port input, then a couple of HDMI inputs and some uh, standard analog VGA inputs as well. Um, on the output is uh, HD base T and an HDMI mirrored outputs. So if you've got two screens in the room or one screen and a, and a projector, uh, you can send 
one of the outputs to the projector, one of the outputs to the screen, and at least for a bigger size boardroom, uh, you can have two screens so you can see it better from further distance. RS-232 control as well as IP control on this unit. It's got a little built-in amplifier, 100 volt line, 40 watts, and it comes with a receiver for the HD base T output as well. Auto switching happens inside this unit as well, which is a great feature for most of the units. This next little guy is a really, really cool piece of equipment. This is called an ALF BYOD. So this guy allows you to do multi-format presentation um, in terms of uh, iOS, Android, Mac, Windows. So if you can see there from the signals, there's lightning connection, USB-C, mini DP, uh, DP to HDMI. And um, this is very, very cool piece of equipment in terms of the fact that it converts HDMI signal well, from any of those inputs to the HDMI single out at 1080p or 4K which is also a really nice feature. So you have a little switch at the back that allows you to switch from 1080p to 4K. If you can have a look there on the presentation, there's a little switch at the back there. And that allows you to do um, either 4K or 1080p. You would switch it from one to the other, just reboot the unit, and then the resolution will take from there. Um, Next on the list is what, this is a part of the switching equipment, uh, a part of this matrixing equipment as part of the scaling equipment as well. So this guy is SM62T. This is a local in-house creation that the guys from Alpha Technologies had come up with. Um, it took us about a year, year and a half to put this together. Looking at the looking at the industry, seeing what the markets require in terms of switching, matrixing, um, extending, all that kind of stuff. So basically, as you can see from the description there, it's a 16 2 out switcher matrix um, with scaling capabilities as well inside. So we've got some HDMI ports. I think that yeah, there's three HDMI ports, one DP and two VGA which is obviously the scaling side of it. And then you have two output ports, which is an HDMI, a, a, sorry, HDMI port and an HD base T port. And those are matrixed. So that means HDMI one can go to HDMI out and VGA one, for example, can go to the HD base T out. So you can have two different pictures. So if we all understand matrixing, this is exactly what it can do. On top of that, um, any of the audio that can be de-embedded from any of those six inputs, as well as the two inputted, the standard analog inputs can also be matrixed on the outputs of the audio. So if you have a look again there, and I'll just use my highlighter. Uh, sorry. Laser. So there's two mic line inputs, if you guys can see that. And then on, this, on the, the right-hand side here is line one, line two, line three out with some change of uh, connection types as well. And on those, we can matrix any of the inputs audios or those analog input audios to any of those outputs, which is a kind of pre-out, let's put it that way. And then there's also an amplified out which is also very cool. So you can matrix it in any way possible that you would like. On top of that, you can use the HD base TU, the HDMI, audio and visual on both of them to allow you to go to monitors and you can have the audio straight on the monitor as well. It comes with a bail-in as well, or an extender, or an RX unit, which allows you to extend it from the HD base T port. It is IP controlled and RS-232 controlled and obviously comes with the remote control as well. Cool. <clears throat> Next on the list is some switching equipment. 
So we have a, what we call a WUK3A, which is a new piece of equipment. We haven't had this for very long. It's a three in one out 4K HDMI automatic switcher. So if you plug into HDMI one, it'll then pick it up and then it'll output on the HDMI output. If you plug into HDMI two while still in one, it'll take over on two and vice versa. It's a 4K unit at 60. Full HD, uh, full 4K, sorry, HDR, and you can control this over an IR or a button. I do apologize for the RS-232 in there, but you cannot control it over RS-232. That is a mistake. Um, next unit, which can be controlled over RS-232, is the WUK4A. This is an upgraded version of the WUH4A that we've had for a while. The great thing about this is, again, it's now full 4K, um, HDC, HDCP or HDMI 2.0, HDCP 2.2, EDRD management inside, full 4K HDR, RS-232 and IR controlled. And this has an audio D embedder inside of it, which makes life a lot easier for a lot of guys. Um, you don't have to then D embed audio off the HDMI on a separate box. This obviously comes inside uh, or available on the box itself, which is very cool. Last in the switching equipment is our little ALF TH, TPHD 405. Um, this is a wall, basically wall mounted or box mounted switcher scaler. It's one of the smallest ones we have. It's a two in one out, basically. So VGA HDMI, so it does some scaling in there. And we've had lots of joy out of this piece of equipment. We've had it in the in the range for a very, very long time. This excludes the TPBHD70 receiver, um, which then allows us to um, uh, extend this over CAT um, to a projector or a screen or whatever the case is, and it works nicely. <coughs> Thank you. So boosters and HDMI. Um, guys, can I ask you for a couple of seconds, maybe Warren, if you can just take over, just explain the boosters and the HDMI on the BK20. I really just need to clear my throat. Okay, it's not there. BK20. So HDMI 2.0, HDCP 2.2. This unit is a HDMI booster. So trans total transmission on 4K is about 35 meters and on 1080p, um, it'll do 50 meters. It's a very, very nice piece of equipment. Um, the, the great thing about this unit is that you don't need an extra power supply for it to work. Uh, it uses the five volts in the system or on the HDMI cable to energize the box. That will allow you to uh, extend a little bit further. So the next slide, Warren will uh, take over for a couple of seconds, please, Warren. Right, sorry about that, guys. Uh, so we're going to have a chat about the Alphatron CV2.0K14. So it supports uh, HTCP 2.2 and EDID bars, bypass and auto input resolution detection, of course, optimizes resolution of display device. The transmission of 4K at 60 hertz, 4 by 2 by 0, right? So the signal from the source to display is up to 15 meters, no more than that. And there's no need for external power supply. And then let's have a look if I can control this presentation to move forward. OK, I'm back. Ah, perfect. Thank you, Spencer. Okay, guys, sorry about that. Just had to clear the throat. Sometimes a little bit difficult. So yeah, so next guy is control interfaces. We've only got one control interface in the Alphatron range. Very, very cool little piece of equipment as well. Uh, WP8 programmable control panel, eight buttons, RS-232, port, uh, RS-485, some infrared, some relays, 12 volt relays. Um, it's got a loop mode on it, so you can put two keypads together if you really want to. 
if you've got uh, the need for more control. There's an IR learning function built into the bottom of the keypad as well. And it's backlit buttons. Um, it's also available in uh, aluminium, well, brushed aluminium. So this is the black color that you can see. The input is 12 volts. Um, the output relays, you can see there's two of them, which allows you to do 12 volt uh, relay on that. So in essence, our Grandview screens, if you have this programmed in a small to medium uh, boardroom, so projector on, projector off, so you can control the projector over RS-232, the relay function on the, on the on the control box allows you to trigger the screen. So when you say projector on, it'll send the on command to the projector and the 12 volt trigger will allow the, the projector screen to drop down. If you switch projector off, it'll give the off function and take away the 12 volts, which allows the projector screen to retract. It's a very, very, very cool piece of equipment. Some IR uh, controlling in there as well. And like I say, 485 as well. Great. Next little category is twisted pairs. Uh, everybody's got a different name for these twisted pairs, extenders, balins, converter, cat converters. So we call it twisted pair extenders. The first little guy out of the box is the Alphatron EXT60RR. This is our most cost effective uh, unit in our range. Um, it does 1080p, 55 meters, HTCP 1.4, HDMI uh, 1.4 as well. And uh, we are happy to say that we will be upgrading this unit to a 4K box. It won't be the same price, obviously, but we will be upgrading the unit and a 4K version of this EXT60RR will be coming out. So it'll be... Uh, a really, really nice piece of equipment when it comes out. The 4K version, we have tested it locally. It works like a bomb. It also does only the 40 meters in terms of 4K. And then it'll be the 70 meters, if I'm not mistaken, on the 1080p once the box comes out. Next unit is our IPM1 TX and RX sets. Uh, these are sold separately. I'm pretty sure most of you guys know about that. Um, it's basically an IP HD encoder and decoder. And what happens is this units are, you can put in one TX and many RX units on a network switch. And uh, that will allow the TX to broadcast through to all the RXs in the, in the environment that it's in and extend it up to essentially 254 pieces of equipment because we need obviously 255 devices on one subnet in terms of IP. You can use it as a standalone as well. So it does come with a five volt power supply in the box and it'll run up to hundred meters, 1080p. Again, no other forms of control on this. It's purely just the HDMI extension and that's it. Next unit we have, which is a TPUK70 RS. So this is a TX and RX uh, set. This is the new ultra thin HDMI 2.0 4K extender set. Uh, 40 meters 4K, 70 meters 1080p. Uh, it has RS-232 on it. It has I, uh, IR control in and out. HD base T obviously to bring to and from the traffic and HDMI. I only need one power supply for this unit. So therefore uh, RX behind the monitor or behind the projector or whatever the case is that allows you to uh, not find power inside the roof or behind in the wall and make it a mission to get the RX to be powered up. The TX can do it from the rack, which is great. <clears throat> I think this is the last guy in our in our set. Uh, this is an ALF TPHD 403 set. So this is essentially the five-play HD base T version of our um, extenders. So this has HDMI. This has IR in and out. It has 232. It has Ethernet port as well. 
which allows us to run Ethernet via the HD base T cable from one point to the other. It's a little 10, 100 uh, connection. That's not gigabit or anything like that. So it's not too fast, but it's enough to give you a network on a monitor or on a piece of a, de a piece of device that you have extended to. A very, very nice piece of equipment. Then we have the receiver only, which is a TPB HD70. Uh, this guy is just a receiver. So in other words, this goes into our modular matrix uh, units as a receiver. It goes into our uh, TP, so MUH or MUK8844 uh, TP units, the TP HD405 that we spoke about earlier, the SUH4T, which is also a four-way splitter, so this is a receiver basically at the end of the day. Um, it does 40 meter 4K, 70 meter 1080p, and it comes with a power supply in the box. And this is the transmitter version of that exact product. So this will transmit, so HDMI in, HDBase-T out, back through to the modular matrixes um, or to uh, SE91, uh, which allows you to bring something from far into the into the switcher or scalar or matrix unit. Next, splitters and distribution amplifiers. So here we've got two little units. One's called an SUK2 and one's called an SUK4. Um, Two-way, four-way, 4K, 444 HDR, 60 hertz. Uh, HDMI 2.0, HDCP 2.2, and EDID, EDID management in the in the boxes. Really great pieces of equipment, inexpensive, and these guys work like a bomb. I don't think I need to explain anything more about that. They quite self-explanatory. Then we go to modular matrices quickly. So this is just kind of highlights of all the products. It's not all of our products. Um, you can see all of our products on the price list on our website. But the modular matrices, the ones that we want to kind of highlight, is a newer box called an FMX12. So this is a seamless modular matrix unit that allows you to put in 12, 12 input or output slotted cards. Um, ranging from HDMI, VGA, DVI, SDI, HDBase-T, and you can arrange it in any format that you would like. Um, so you can do a six by six, uh, so six in, six out. You can do a 10 by two, you can do a two by 10. It really depends on what kind of uh, application you need it for. And it is seamless. So this guy is really, really great. Um, our seamless switching happens, so uh, it essentially freezes the picture for 0 0.003 seconds, and then it would then produce the second picture or the third or fourth or fifth as you go. Really great piece of equipment. Um, we've got I, uh, sorry RS-232 control on it, and we've got IP control on the unit. It comes standard on the unit. Um, this is a, a card that will never be changed or taken out. Um, yeah. Very nice piece of equipment. We jump through to the matrix switches very quickly. So first in the first in the line is our new MUK44 and MUK88A-N. So the dash N means that it's network capable, and the both the new the new units are full 4K 444 HDR. Is obviously a 4x4 version and an 8x8 version. Um, HDCP 2.2, EDRD management inside, TP control, IR control. Um, and there is built in audio de embedding, which is a SPDIF, which allows you to de embed audio um, into a, an amplifier that requires SPDIF. IP controlled, RS232 controlled. There's also some dip switches at the back. You can see the little red um, connector there, which is not very clear. Sorry about that. But you can do a little bit of EDID management there. So you can switch it on, switch it off, bypass it, uh, make it 1080, 4K, whatever it is that you require. Cool. 
Next little unit is probably one of the most inexpensive, cost-effective um, 4K units in the market at the moment. This guy is not very big. It's a very small unit. It's probably a half rack uh, spaced unit. Four in, four out, HDMI matrix, IR or RS-232 controlled. This is selling very, very well uh, at the moment. Um, uh, this this guy is, is I, I would say one of the the top of the range little four by four matrices that allow us to do four four uh, k um, in and out. We've got a lot of good feedback from it, and uh, yeah, great great piece of equipment. Next guys on the list MUH forty four E and eighty eight E. So basically, these are um, matrix kits if you have a look at the at the at the picture at the bottom you will notice that this is the 88 so basically there is eight hdmi inputs then you will see that there's only seven hd base t outputs and then the eighth output is an eight uh, an hdmi cable which will essentially be a local out so sort of pointed towards the home industry we have used this or we have sold this into the commercial industry as well uh, where you guys have different rooms and we want to matrix the inputs from each room to the next room or whatever the case is um, but this is great these these guys use uh, 70 meters 1080p 40 meters 4k on the balance or the extenders the receivers with ir in and out so this allows you to extend or essentially extend sources through to different rooms and allow you to control the, the boxes let's say like a dstv decoder through the input uh, through the matrix and then allow you to control it via the r the ir um, inside every different bedroom with the with the dstv remote control rs232 and ip controlled and then you'll notice on the last port there, um, it's an HDMI uh, output. Also, it has the embedded audio specifically on that output, which is quite nice. So if the guys have a separate amplifier, just a monitor and a separate amplifier, at least you've got the, the de embedded uh, output of audio there. <laughs> right, next in the line. MUH44TP and 88TP. So again, four by four or eight by eight. You will notice in this picture, this is a four by four matrix. The first two outputs of the matrix are mirrored with an HDMI and HD base T, which some people actually like. Um, the fact that we can do the HD base T to a projector and the HDMI to a local monitor. Um, or a comfort monitor, as they say, so that people can see what they're actually talking about, which is quite nice. The great thing about these is also the fact that there is HD, um, sorry, uh, extended de-embedded audio per, per zone or per output, which is very, very cool in the fact that you can have separate audio running through to a DSP or through to an amplifier specifically for that zone. So you don't have to separate your your command structures into audio and video kind of commands. You just say HDMI input one to output one and the audio and visual will change accordingly um, as you go. Each zone also has an RS-232 pass through, which is also very cool. So that means that from the box itself, you can have a controller, you can then connect the RS-232 straight into that over the HD base T cable through to the receiver, which will be our TPB HD 70. You can take the RS-232 out of that extender and plug it into your projector or to your monitor. And you can then essentially control that unit right from, from the, the rack without running any extended extra cables for that matter. Very, very nice. And there's an eight by eight version of this as well. So the eight by eight would be eight inputs eight outputs and the first four will be mirrored with an HDMI output as well. Great. 
Next on our list is what we call interactive displays. So we've managed to go into the interactive displays. We've had them for about, I think, eight, eight to 10 months already. We've done a lot of homework on these guys. Um, we've done a lot of testing on these guys. I think that at this point in time, the machine that we have is really, really great. It's really cost effective. And on top of it, it works like a bomb. It works very, very well. It's stable. Um, the nice thing is we've got three different sizes. We've got a 65 inch, a 75 inch and an 86 inch. Uh, they all look exactly the same in terms of the look and feel. The Windows running system on them, you guys can decide in choosing an Intel Core i5 uh, with an 8 gig uh, RAM and 256 SSD hard drive or a Core i7 with 8 gig RAM and a 256 core hard drive, uh, 256 hard drive. On the Android side, at the moment, the boxes or the machines that we have in now are Android 6.0. The newer versions, uh, once we receive, will be having 8.0 uh, version of Android on them. So that means the latest uh, in terms of Android running system on the units. So that means the latest Zoom or Skype or Teams can be downloaded, uh, which it can be now done on 6.0 but at least it's, it's keeping up with the, with the times. This screen has annotations built into it. It's a 40 point touch. Uh, the annotation or the interactive whiteboard software is built in. It's an Alphatron software uh, that we've manufactured, we have made and we've uh, put it onto the, onto the screens. The software is a 24, 20 point touch uh, software inside. And you have screen sharing built into the monitor as well. So you can download a software which we um, call eShare and that allows you to use iOS, Android, PC, Mac um, in terms of AirPlay or screen sharing. And that allows you to share from your device through to the screen, pictures, files, anything, anything to that matter. Very, very nice module. Okay, so next is our VC cameras. So we have quite a few in the range. Uh, this is the bottom of the range or the, the entry level unit, which is called a CAM 100. This is purely a 1080p, 120 degree shooting angle, mechanically adjustable in terms of the lens. You'll see at the bottom, there's a little connection uh, that is at the bottom of the camera, which allows you to essentially put this onto a pole mount or you can sit it on the top of a monitor um, it's got little rubber feet at the bottom that allows you to hook it onto the monitor and it's a usb2 connection the nice little feature of this cam 100 is that it automatically detects if the camera is mounted upside down or not it's one of the great features of this little unit and it comes with a, a, another connection inside the box, um, a little bracket that allows you to connect it upside down if you really want to. A very, very nice piece of equipment. Then we have what we call a CMW101. So this is one camera, one mic pod with speaker built into the unit. Uh, also again, 120 degree viewing angle, 1080p mechanically adjustable. And then that is USB 2 connection as well. Uh, this supports any type of video meeting software, namely Skype, Teams, Zoom, uh, GoToWebinar, uh, any soft codec form uh, that, you, that you guys have or require or use. And the little mic pod there you can see on the left-hand side has got three little mics built into it with a speaker, it's a five watt speaker. 360 degree microphone coverage. There's a battery built into it with a USB connection for um, for charging. The battery lasts up to about six to eight hours in terms of talk time. This is obviously purely talk time. So if you have um, audio playing through it or video, uh, like a video playing, um, that obviously will make sure, make the battery work harder and it'll be less time on the battery. Uh, it's got dynamic noise reduction built into it as well. 
And the nice thing is with this stuff is there's no driver needed for these guys. And once you plug it in, it's a, essentially plug and play. It's, it's immediately available as a USB device inside any one of your soft codec device, uh, uh, programs. Cool. The next section or the next product is what we call a 102. Again, exactly the same camera, exactly the same features, 1080p, 120 degree shooting angle. But now we have this for a bigger coverage room. So this will be into a, a, a semi medium to smallish large, uh, well, not small, uh, a slightly large uh, boardroom setup. So we're talking maybe eight, eight to 10 seater. Um, because it has two microphone speakers, which allow it to obviously make the space a bit bigger to where we can hear the nice technology built into the units is that um, if you're speaking on, let's say, microphone or pod A, pod B will then be muted and vice versa. So we will get that mix minus happening in there so that you don't get any feedback happening via the two different speaker microphone pods. Cool. In the smaller uh, versions of cameras or VC camera uh, uh, units that we have, this is what we call our S um, USB 2 video bar. It's a 1080p video. That's again exactly the same camera as the lo the last three different uh, versions or models. Full 1080p, 120 degree viewing angle. The microphones on this is obviously not a 360, these are 180 degree coverage with the built-in five watt speakers. So if you have a look on the unit, on the left-hand side is the two um, uh, speakers and on the right-hand side is the microphones built into the unit. If you have a look at the plate as well, you'll see that the plate at the back there has a rubber foot on it with two little feet in the front that allows you to hook again onto a uh, top of a monitor. Uh, you can't really see it on this picture, but you'll see there where my dot is. There's four holes that it allows you to actually mount this onto the wall, um, either above or underneath a monitor, um, so that it's obviously fixed mounted onto the wall as well, which is quite nice. Again, no drivers needed, USB plug and play. You'll see the 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 name come up as um, a USB plug and pay device and away you go type of thing. Cool. Next in the range is our Alphatron 5X uh, PTZ camera. These are also 1080p at 60 frames. Uh, the PTZ camera is suitable for medium to large uh, meeting rooms or boardrooms or conference areas. This is what we call flip capable. So that means you can actually mount it upside down. The bracket does come in the box with the unit. So you can have this desktop mounted or you can actually have it ceiling mounted and you can actually change the, the lens to obviously flip the lens. It's compatible again with all the, the video meeting softwares, Skype, Teams, Zoom. The connections at the back are USB 3 or HDMI out. There's an RS-232 port on it, and there's also a LAN port that allows you to do a lot of uh, guys are doing it now, which is your RTP streaming. So that allows you to do streaming from this device onto your YouTube channel or through to any other kind of streaming uh, softwares that you guys require or use. It's got a IR, uh, sorry, it's got a, um, a mounting bracket, which I said before, and an IR remote control also available for the unit. The RS-232 control on these units, so on the 5X or the 10X, um, is Palco D uh, control or Sony control. So the commands are very basic. It's a standard command throughout. This is the 10X. A USB 3 camera. So it looks exactly the same as the 5X. It's just a 10X version. Um, suitable also again for meeting, medium to large uh, meeting rooms, boardrooms, conference areas. Again, also flip compatible and compatible with all the different versions of softwares. 
these we also <clears throat> sorry we also pair these up with um, another product of ours, uh, Biamp, which is a Devio, which requires a camera to be fed into the system so that you can use it for also your soft codec. So we would combine these in systems like that. Um, so either a 5X or a 10X with the with a Devio system with the built-in microphones and all that, which allows us to give a full complete package in terms of a soft codec VC um package let's say cool next on the list is a 10x u2 this is a very very fast seller for us um it's a usb2 10x camera 1080p sorry we haven't put in the the descriptions there but I, if i'm not mistaken it's at 30 frames per second um, again, also suitable for the meeting, uh, medium to large size uh, meeting rooms, compatible with all the different softwares. This is also great because it's USB 2. So that means in terms of extending this guy, it's a lot easier than the USB 3 guys that we have. Um, so in terms of extending, there's a lot of different extending uh, boxes for USB 2 at this point in time. But just to let you know, we are also um, looking and we have in our possession the USB 3 extender cables that we are busy testing at the moment. Uh, we have time to do it because we're all sitting at home so we can test equipment really, really well. Um, that will allow us to extend USB 3 roughly to about between 15 and 30 meters, uh, depending on which cable um, which which units we we're going to be testing and getting uh, a go ahead on uh, which is also then back compatible to usb2 so we will be able to give you an extender cable as well as the camera in the future and you wouldn't have to go and buy separate cables or from somebody else uh, extender cable which is quite great this is this camera is also flip capable um, it comes with the mounting bracket inside the box and it's RS-232 controlled, um, Palco D, Sony control, and uh, only USB 2 output. There's no HDMI output on here. Excuse me. Okay, so audio equipment and amplifiers. So the first little guy in the, in the mix here is what we call a CHKA2. This is a full 4K 444 HDR, HDMI 2.0 to HDCP 2.2 audio D embedder. So HDMI in, HDMI out um, with the capabilities of balanced audio on a Phoenix connector, unbalanced on the RCA connector and coax on the, also an RCA connector. That will allow us to de-embed the stereo audio of the units. Um, this is a, a very, very nice piece of equipment because this essentially goes back to the whole factor of you can have your HDMI cable running straight through to your audio system that will allow you to pull all the 5.1, 7.1, Dolby Digital, all that kind of stuff. And you can extract the stereo off that, that same cable without any issues or without any uh, problems and have the stereo running through to a, a standard stereo multi-room or standard stereo amplifier. Very, very nice. Then we get into our small little amplifiers. We have a Alphatron PA2B, which is a little low impedance two by 20 watt amplifier. So two by 20 at four ohms. And if you do it uh, one by 40 at eight ohms in bridge mode, 24 volt power supply, it has three different types of inputs. So in a standard RCA uh, left and right input, a 3.5 input. And then the third input is a either mic or line input that allows you to do a mic input into this guy. Um, so if you plug in a mic, it can do ducking over the audio source which is a very nice feature. It has uh, 48 volts phantom power on it for the different types of microphones. And it is probably one of the smallest 
uh, cost-effective amplifiers in the market that has RS-232 control, which is a very, very cool feature of this unit that allows you to put it into the roof or put it into the rack and allows you to, to control the, the audio or the volume control of the system without uh, having the, the client just using his volume control of his PC. You can actually limit it on the actual volume controls on the, on the amplifier as well. If you have a look at the top picture, there's a little loop out, which is also nice. So that means you can loop it out to a secondary amplifier or another type of amplifier, and you can have the same source playing. So what we've told guys in the past is you can have uh, an amplifier on the left side and another amplifier on the right side. If you need more power, you can obviously do it as one by 40, and you can have more speakers put into the room, add in another one or two speakers, because you're looping it out, it'll have the same audio quality throughout both of them. <clears throat> Sorry. Yeah, come on. There we go. So next unit is a PA100V. So also mini amplifier, class D, with mic mixer, 40 watts, 100 watt line. It's got a little volume bass treble adjustable separately on the, on the front panel. There's three audio inputs, one digital, two analog. Again, we have the same thing there where we've got a mic line input with a 48, uh, 48 volts for phantom power. It's also got RS-232 control on it, which is a very nice feature that a lot of guys don't have on these small little amplifiers. And it's IR controlled as well, um, 70 or 100 volt line. Next box is quite nice. This is a PA100W compact digital amplifier. Um, this guy is two by 50 watts at eight ohm or one by 100 watts at four ohm. It's got a remote in the box and it's also got a loop out. So this is quite a nice step up in terms of power in from the PA to B to the uh, the PA100V. So here you've got two by 50 or one by 100. So it gives you a lot more power out of the box. Um, IP controlled and RS-232 controlled or IR as well. That's the great thing about this thing is that it's the IP control, which is also another sort of side of it that a lot of other smaller digital amplifiers like this do not have this type of control on it. Um, you, you, you normally need some kind of a pre or DSP in the, in the beginning so that it can control the volume of the units instead of it just being a, a, a standard dumb amplifier. This has control in it as, as well, which is quite nice. Cool. Some new guys into our range, um, a 60 watt and 120 watt switchable amplifiers. Um, so these are compact public address systems. Um, speaker output is 100 volt line or low impedance. Um, rated at 60 watts or 120 watts, depending on the amplifier. We will be bringing in a 250 watt, hopefully towards the end of the year, which will, which will um, then have 60, 120, and 250 or 240. So we'll have three different versions of that. And then you've got different applications for each. Built into the unit is an MP3 player, FM tuner, and Bluetooth. Um, there's also mic inputs. There's an auxiliary input and there's a USB input on the unit as well. The nice thing with this guy is uh, you'll see on the bottom right hand side, there's an EMC built into the unit. So this is for emergencies. So if you have a 100 volt line system in the office space or in the, let's say a mall, for example, you can run that 100 volt line system into this amplifier. And once it receives any any uh, type of voltage, it will then prioritize the EMC and allow that music or that audio to be pushed over this amplifier and block all the other audio. So it's quite a nice feature that it has in, inside of it. It's got a mic input in the front and then also a mic input at the back. It's also got audio loop out or audio pre out uh, or auxiliary out, let's put it that way. So you can then daisy chain, or you can put this into another amp, another amp, another amp, another amp, 
and uh, it allows you to sort of loop the, the audio through the guys, which is very cool. So this supports um, normal 240 or 230 volts, as well as a backup 24 volt power supply can also be put into the unit for uh, emergencies. There's a deal, a deal for small venues, or classrooms, small retail stores or coffee shops, um, or even small restaurants for that matter. Um, we've we've seen one or two go into small restaurants where they've put two two boxes or two amplifiers, one for let's say zone A, one for zone B. They link the two together. Everything plays the same from the the first amplifier, but if they have separate parties or something like that inside the inside the restaurants, they can essentially change the audio on box B opposed to box A and have it separately uh, playing in different two different zones, which is quite a nice feature. Okay, so speakers. So we have uh, on-wall speakers or cab cabinet speakers, as well as ceiling speakers in the Alphatron range. These are very, very great cost-effective um, uh, speakers. They are, a lot of them are switchable. So 100 volt line as well as low impedance, which is also a great feature. So that allows you to put it into different applications. So here we have the LF, uh, w, uh 51 and 41 speakers. So we'll have an ALFW or an ALFB, which will be black or white. Uh, the 41 is a four inch two way speaker that has taps of 20, 20, 20, 10, five and 2.5 uh, at 100 volt line. And the power handling is 20 watts at eight ohms. You'll see that um, it's a powdered white uh, a box or powdered gray, a uh, black box. This is not uh, a speaker that can be put directly into uh, the environment. So in terms of on-wall speakers inside covered patios, underneath eaves, all that kind of stuff. So they, it's like semi-splash proof. Um, they're not waterproof at all. Um, so please just bear that in bear that in mind. It's a couple little bit of dimensions for the speakers, all that kind of stuff. And then the 50 watt is a five inch. Uh, sorry, the 51 speakers is a five inch with 30 watts uh, power handling and tappings accordingly. The very entry level ceiling speakers that we have, um, the ALF 513, 603, either white or black, 613 also white or black, and then the WSP5C, which is a ceiling speaker as well. So you'll see the different speakers and the different uh, sizes of any, any of the speakers. There's different tap, tapping on them, but you will notice that these are not switchable. These are only 100 volt line speakers. They are not 8 ohm at all, um, unless you cut the transform off, but we don't really recommend that. And uh, they're very, very tiny speakers. So five, uh, five inch, six inch, eight inch, um, very, very small uh, speakers. And uh, entry level, these are for passages, bathrooms, um, all those kind of places where we just need standard background BGM music in that sense. Then we move on to second from top, we can call it in terms of our ceiling speakers. So this is a 406 and a 606, so again, four inch for the 406 and six inch for the 606. Um, these guys have backhands, which is quite nice. So this will go into your small to medium um, or even large for that matter, meeting rooms or conference areas. So that allows you to have sort of semi-private conversations and the, the sound doesn't disperse out into the, into the ceiling for everybody to hear if the ceiling is not closed off correctly. And it pushes the audio down into the room nicely. Uh, these are 20 watts on the 406 and uh, 30 watts on the 606. And these are switchable. So they have power tappings inside them as well. So 100 volt line or low impedance. 
next is the top of the range um, ceiling speakers from Alphatron. This is the 457 and the 657, again, a four inch and a six inch. And these guys have a magnetic grill, which is quite a nice feature. Some guys like the fact that there's a magnetic grill, they don't see the lip of the speaker. And these also have backhands built into them. They are both 100 volt line and low impedance. Um, you can see on the four inch, it's a 20 watt, if I'm not mistaken, 20 watt, uh, 40 watt rating. And on the six inch is a 75 watt rating. Um, and then the taps accordingly as you go down. We have volume controls as well. So we have a volume control, 30 watts, 160 watts and 120 watts uh, line step volume controls. These are just basic step converter, step line step volume controls. Um, again, 60, or 30, 60 and 120 watts. These are really great. So you can have a whole lot of speakers in different zones. You can play the same music in all the all the zones, but you can individually um, put this volume control in line, and that allows you to then turn down the volume separately in each of the different zones, but still having the same amount of uh, same as a uh, source of music, which is very nice. Okay, then we have some AV interfaces. So basically, what we have here is what we call our pop-ups. Um, so we have a TSC6, a TSM1, and a TSM4. So uh, let's see, my highlighter is there. Excuse me. So this is a TSC6 over here. So we have one RSA plug. We have uh, two powered USB connections there to power up or charge any device, namely the CMW101's uh, mic pod. If it's a little bit, uh, if it needs a bit of charging, we can plug it in there or any device, uh, iOS or Android um, device. With the, the regulated little switch, you'll see there on that one, there's also got a switch on that side as well. This TSM4 is an older version picture. We haven't obviously updated that picture. And then you'll see that there's cables that can be retracted there. So that TSC6, uh, that comes with the HDMI, VGA, 3.5, uh, two RJ45 connections and the USB connector as well. But in saying that you can open this up and you can take out the VGA, you can put another HDMI in there, you can put uh, any type of cables. It has slots for six different cables inside that box, um, which is a really nice feature. And then the little lid at the top there, which you can just pull closed once you've uh, used the equipment. The TSM1, which is on the left-hand side here, it has network ports. It's got a USB port. It's got HDMI, a display port, and a VGA with the audio port, the power plug, and a connect uh, and a. Oh, sorry about that. Um, and this is obviously a pop-up. This is the original pop-up where you push it down, it then goes flat. Once you press it, it'll then pop up again. Same with the TSM4. You'll see that all of them have the standard RSA power socket, which is a regulated power socket, all the SABS approvals and all that kind of stuff um, with a fuse holder in the back um, in case uh, something happens uh, in terms of a short It'll then burn the fuse, and at least the, the, the unit won't burn any of your equipment. Cool. Some cables. So we've got a whole range of HDMI cables now, um, right from, uh, I do apologize, a 0 0.6 meter cable, um, which is not on this list. So we have a 0 0.6, we have a two meter, a five meter, a 10 meter, and a 15 meter. All these cables are HDMI 2.0, HDCP 2.2, full HD resolutions right up through to 4K 60, 444 HDR. You'll see that the 15 meter there is specifically um, written with a unidirectional um, explanation underneath it. So that means that this cable can only go from display or source to display. Um, it is not a bi-directional cable like all the other cables above and underneath. 
it is a specific chip inside of it um, that allows it to just again source and display. You'll see the 20 meter cable there is only at 1080p at 60. This is not a 4K cable at all, which um, we all know that 20 meters in terms of a standard copper cable is also a little bit difficult to do 4K. And uh, we didn't really see the the point of it when we had a, a proper 15 meter at the at the 4K range. Then the last two cables at the bottom are 20 meter 4K 60 444 fiber cables. There's a 20 meter and a 40 meter. These are also unidirectional cables, so source and display. Inside them, you can't really see the picture too well, but you'll see that there's a nice big uh, HDMI head on each side with a chip inside it that's obviously powered that will allow the five volts of the HDMI um, source to energize the chip, which then essentially pushes the, the information through the cable and uh, can push it out on the other side through the, the, the HDMI uh, socket. These are probably at this point in time, a very, very good seller for us. Um, a lot of people have been using this. The nice thing is with the with the actual head, you can fit it into um, a 25 uh, mil pipe, and that will allow you to still push it through a nice conduit, 25 mil, and obviously bigger conduit. And yeah, sometimes you just get away with a hard wide cable, which some guys really really like, opposed to extending it over cat or anything like that. <clears throat> and yeah. So they work really, really well. You'll see the specifications on the on the right hand side there, 18 gigabits. It's got audio return channel built into all of the units. Uh, there is the Visa 4K standards or 4K resolution standards in there. Dolby Vision also built into the unit, 7.1 audio Dolby, um, DTS audio, all that stuff built into the units as well. Okay. Last slide, and then we can just kind of answer a couple of questions if there is or if there hasn't been answered. And this is our Alphatron Cat 6 shielded SFTP cable, ideal for ideal cable for Alphatron Twisted Pair products. So any of our products that we've spoken about in terms of the um, the meat reach and the capabilities of the Cat extenders or anything like that, um, that allows you to um, extended over the 100 meter or the 40 meter or the 60 meters um, we've tried and tested this on our specific cables so it's a 23 gauge solid copper SFTP you'll see the little connection at the bottom or the little cable at the bottom there and 1080p over 100 meters and 4k at 60 meters so yeah that's essentially me uh, thank you very much for listening um, if you guys need to see any other specifications, you guys can go to alphatronelectronics.com. And um, yeah, so uh, guys, Warren, uh, do you see if there's any questions that kind of need answered? Um, we can quickly run through them. Just check the questions here. Ah, so we have That's, a question. Uh... Yeah. From Greg uh, Batendock, he's just asking if the two meter HDMI flexible cables are available as yet. No, uh, we still just got the standard HDMI cable. It is flexible, but it's not flexible in that sense. Um, it's a, it's a soft kind of plastic. So yeah, um, we don't have the actual flexi cables as such. Um, yeah. Uh, okay, and then you, um, Miguel Santos would like to know about the max wireless distance on the uh, two by mic wireless conference units. The what? The maximum wireless distance on the two mic wireless conference units. Which units are those? Sorry, I'm confused. Miguel, which units are you referring to? Probably the one and one and one and two stencil. Oh, okay. <laughs> Sorry about that. Um, yeah. So the distance is so from somebody sitting speaking 
to the microphone is roughly about between eight and ten meters. Um, you wouldn't go any further than that. I mean, it's not a very big um, speaker, obviously, to hear. And then the microphone pick up, uh, yeah, roughly eight to ten meters. Um, the the wireless capability between the actual camera and the speakerphone itself is is a 2.4 wireless. So I mean, the, the range is very far away. But essentially, the camera, if you go probably out of the five meter range in terms of the camera, um, you you won't see the person very clearly. Um, but yeah, speaking through the the mic pod is about between eight to ten meters roughly. So on top of it, um, just one or two other things, which, uh, sorry, I didn't mention right in the beginning. Um, Alphatron has a seven year warranty um, throughout its products. I think the only one in the in the product range that is not seven years is the touch screens, but that we can confirm, just speak to your representative and they can confirm that. Um, the other thing is we are also part of the essential services um guys so we are allowed to uh, supply uh, any of you guys that are doing anything towards essential services um for any purposes um all the the testing rooms and if you need the vc or camera or microphones anything like that um we can assist you guys in doing that so we don't have any restrictions on that um, yeah, I think that's about it, guys. I don't think there's anything more than that. Cool. I think that's about it, um, guys. If there is anything more than that, um, like I said, please just get hold of your guys' representatives or you can email solutions or services at Alpha Tech. And uh, you can go and check on our website on alphatronelectronics.com or on alphatech.co.za. And uh, yeah, we can kind of take it from there. So thank you very much and enjoy the rest of the, the lockdown. Thank you, guys. Cheerio.